video, since my last video was a get ready with me, this is kind of going to be like a get ready with me, but it's not. It's going to be a, a get to know me to you guys about my kids, my relationships, everything like that. But give me more, guys. Like I said, I'm going to do a get to know me today. And we're going to start with, let's see. We'll see. We'll start from like when I had my first kid, like that relationship and on. Okay, so, and I'm going to be getting ready while I talk to you guys about this, so. Anyway, we'll start when I was, okay, I was 17 when I met my oldest two kids' his father. And I met him from his cousin. I was hanging out with his cousin, and let's call them, let's see, the cousin we'll call Frank. So, I was hanging out with Frank. And he brought his brother, Jesse, and his cousin, Danny. I'm going to use the full house characters. Okay, so I was hanging out with Joey. We're going to call Joey the friend. Okay, I was hanging out with Joey. And like I said, he brought his brother, Jesse, and his cousin, uh, Danny. So, like I said, I was hanging out with Frank. Frank was the cousin. Jesse was the brother. And Danny was... The cousin. Okay. So, and guys, I'm just proud of my shape, too. And, like I said, um, Frank brought his cousin. I kind of liked him, so. I didn't start talking to him for a while. I stayed talking to Frank for a while. And then, I don't know what happened with Frank. I just, I quit talking to him, and I texted um, his cousin Danny the one day and he came over and we hung out and like I said I was 17 at this point and then we started dating in March of 2010 I think was it 2010 yeah of 2010 and we started dating he lived with his mom I lived with my mom and he came over the one day and hung out with me mind you it was like pouring down the snow he walked to my house in the snow walked like an hour to my house in the snow and we hung out that day and I we hit it off whereas I didn't know and I will tell you because this does involve drugs he was on drugs I personally didn't know this at the time and I told him and when I did find out I told him I would not date someone who was shooting up heroin like I wouldn't do it and at that time, I was really stupid as to what that looked like or what that meant. Like, I'd never really been around anyone who did that, so. Um, and then he said, okay, and he told me he quit. And then we started dating. Like I said, I started staying at his mom's with him all the time. And then eventually I was living there. And like I said, we got together in March. I found out I was pregnant in May with my son Tristan okay so my bad I just turned 18 or I was 18 and I found out like I said in May I found out I was pregnant with my son Tristan which is my oldest which he is he will be six next month and there's a lot more to this story but um, that I found out I was pregnant everything good like was good for like the first, let's, I want to say four, five months, something like that. Like, I didn't notice anything strange with uh, Danny, nothing like that. He was working, everything was good, like, it was perfect. And then someone moved in where we lived, like where his mom lived, like right down the road from us. And they moved in, and him and his cousin, uh, Frank, were hanging out up there like they were always hanging out up there supposedly helping fix their house whatever and you know I was fine with that and his cousin and then Frank and Danny came back to his mom's that day the one one day and me and Danny got into it and I left I think I was like four months pregnant I left his cousin slipped up and said something about them getting high and like I said at this point I had no idea what that looked like like what that meant like nothing <coughs> so 
I packed my stuff and I went to my aunt's house. My sister's girlfriend came and got me and took me to my aunt's house until I could get to my mom's. So, I eventually got to my mom's. And of course, like I said, I'm four or five months pregnant at this time. So, I was pretty upset. Like, I was actually really upset. Like, I'm pregnant with your child and you're out doing drugs. Like, because everything, like I said, was good at first. Like, he worked. We went out to dinner every Friday. We hung out every Friday. Like, because he worked 12-hour shifts every day. Like, we hung out at night. Like, nothing ever seemed strange to me. Like, not a thing, like, seemed off to me. Then his cousin slipped up and said something about it. And, you know, that didn't set well with me. So, I left. And then, of course, he somehow talked me into coming back. I came back to his mom's. Tried to give him another chance, whatever, like, he quit hanging out with his cousin and all that stuff, and we started going to his family's house more and hanging out with them, and then, so again, of course, I thought everything was going good, so I stayed, like, everything seemed good, like, then, February 15th, 2011, there came Tristan, Tristan was born, so... You know, we had him, we went home, everything seemed fine, like, it was going good, and, you know, I was happy with that, like, everything was good, so, and then we were at his mom's, and then my great-grandma moved out of her house because she was just getting too old, and she went and lived with my aunt and my grandma, so, she, we moved into my great-grandma's house. When Tristan was two months old. I want to see, yeah, he was like two months old. Because we just, I couldn't take living at his mom's. We'll call her Barbara. I couldn't stand living at Barbara's house. Like, I know this sounds bad, but I would be mean. Like, I don't know. Like, I just got agitated, I guess. Like, when she would get home from work during the day, I would, like, give, be like, oh, I got to put Tristan to bed. And mind you, she didn't get home until, she got home at, like, four o'clock in the afternoon. Something like that. So, I would be like, oh, I gotta give Tristan a bath and put him to bed. Like, I don't know. I just didn't want her touching him. Like, I know that sounds bad, but I was a first-time mom, like, and I know a lot of people are gonna be like, wow, that's kind of ignorant. And then, okay, he actually, Danny's sister, Abby, and her husband, uh, split up. So, he drove to Washington, the state Washington, to go get his sister. And I think Tristan was... It was right before my birthday in September, so March, April. Tristan was almost, or Tristan was, yeah, almost, he was seven months old. So, put it that way, everything was good. So, everything was good for the first seven months. He, excuse me, so by, oh, well, let me tell you, let me go back. So we, like I said, moved into my grandma's when Tristan was two months old. And he worked, and I worked, and my sister babysat for us, or his cousin would come in and help from where he lived. Like, he would come stay the weekend and help my sister, because it was summertime, we didn't have school. He would come help my sister watch Tristan and our dog, because we'd got a dog. So, that was really nice of them. Then, we, for some, I don't know what happened, but we got into a fight. I think Tristan was probably four maybe four months old and we got into a fight so uh so like we literally got into a fight he tried to tell me he was taking tristan that wasn't happening i stripped tristan completely naked down to a diaper took his car seat took everything and put it up told him like if you're taking him you're taking him with nothing like everything he has i got like i paid for i bought so i wouldn't let him take anything and that really pissed him off so he ran at me. Because mind you, at this point, he wasn't helping do anything. Like, nothing. He would just come home and go to sleep and do nothing. And I should have knew something was wrong with it then, but of course I didn't because I tried to see the good in everyone. So, I didn't think anything of it. Because his cousin was always there, my best friend was always there. Because, I mean, we're young. We're teenagers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're 18 years old. So... Um, like I said, we got into a fight, and I made him leave, 
I got a restraining order against him, everything, because he smashed my face in the couch, because I told him he deserved the worst Father of the Year award. Because, oh, it was Easter, so it was, Tristan was a month old. Or two months old, yeah. So, I told him he just, because he did not want to get him anything for Easter. He was like, oh, he's a baby, he won't remember it, blah, and I'm just like, um, no, because his mom did not believe in doing Christmas for them until they could remember. Okay, well, I'm sorry, but that's not how I do things in my family, and I'm sure as hell not going to do that to my kid. So, I told him he deserved the worst father of the year award, which was kind of ignorant of me, but in a sense, it's not like that's our child. Like, how can you say you don't want to buy him anything? So, when I said that, he ran at me and smashed my face in the couch. My sister flipped out because she was there. And then my sister left because if not, she probably would have killed him. So, but... Um, then I told him if he did not leave, I was gonna call my grandpa. so he took my cell phone, because his mom paid for my cell phone at this time. So, um, yeah, he took my cell phone, which was fine, because I had my computer, and I told him I was gonna get a hold of my grandpa. so I went to my computer to try to get a hold of my sister, so she could tell my grandpa to come down and make him leave, because they lived right up over the hill from us, and he came in and smashed my hand in the computer. So I punched the computer, I kicked it, and then I threw it across the room, so needless to say, I broke my computer, like just shattered my computer, which, oh, it was terrible, like, but, anyway, I called the cops, got a restraining order on him, threw a metal pipe at his truck, whatever, and then after that, of course, we worked things out, but my grandparents didn't want to let him come back, so, we moved back to his mom's, <laughs> fine, we could be together, it's whatever. We were at his mom's for a couple months. Tristan was seven months old at this time. Him and his sisters, his sister Abby and her husband split up, so he went, he drove to Washington to go get her, so she, that way she didn't have to leave her, tr or he flew out and they drove back together, so she didn't have to leave her truck. Okay, and this was September, right before my birthday, so about September 20th, and, okay, they got back, and his sister stayed at the house for like a night, I think, and then went to her uncle's about uh, 45 minutes away from his mom's, out to her grandma and her uncle's, and she went there. We would go out on the weekends or during the week, whatever, and we'd go out and hang out so his grandma could see Tristan and all that. And mind you, his grandma, she found out I was pregnant, had the nerve to tell him she, that he needed to get a DNA test to make sure that Tristan was his, and she ate her words and apologized after Tristan was born because he looked so much like him. Okay. I don't think we fought for a good while after that. We were fighting, and I left and went home. I went to my grandma's for like two nights after his sister came and left. I think Tristan was still probably about seven months old. Like, it was right after my birthday, which my birthday is the 24th of September, and uh, we'll say probably about the 1st of October. I, we got into a fight, so I left, and I went to my grandma's with my mom and my sister, because they were staying there helping my grandma take care of my great-grandma, because my great-grandma was in her 80s, I think she was like 86, okay, and at this time, Tristan was probably six months old, I didn't know I was pregnant again at this time, which I was. Because my kids are 15, my two oldest are 15 months apart. That weekend that I left and went to my grandma's, he went and hung out at his grandma and his uncle's and was hanging out with one of his friends who stayed with us constantly, it was a straight mooch. Well, she, he had a sister. He slept with her sister that weekend. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm perfect, I'm not saying I didn't cheat on him because I did. But I wouldn't have if he wouldn't have. Like, don't try to do me dirty and expect me not to do you dirty. Well, you know, we got into it and because he told me. Because at first he tried to tell me he just kissed her. And like I told him. So I told him I messaged her and she told me that that wasn't the case. Which I actually really did message her. And then he told me the truth and told me he actually slept with her. We got into it. I cussed his mom that night. I cussed everyone that night. And then he tried to tell me he was going to kill himself and all this crap, so, of course, me being the person I am, I forgave him, like, I constantly forgave. Like I said, I forgave him, and then we got an apartment when I found out I was pregnant. So we moved into an our, to our apartment, and Tristan was eight months old, it was Halloween, 
We moved in right at Halloween time, like a week before Halloween. So we moved into our townhouse. And everything was good. You know, at least as far as I knew it was good. So, so like I said, we moved into our townhouse. Everything, that I, as far as I knew, was good. So, you know, I was nice. Like, I forgave him. Like, I forgave so much crap that I shouldn't have. But I did. So, took Tristan trick-or-treating. Did all that stuff. Like I said, I was pregnant. I found out I was pregnant. Again. So, I'm just sitting there thinking, 19 and gonna have two kids. Like... So a teenager with two kids, which was crazy. But I knew if anyone could do it, I could. Like, I knew I could. Like I said, we moved into our apartment. Everything was good. His cousin would constantly come spend the night. Like, he was my best friend. And every time I would fight, his cousin would take my side and not his. And that would really make him mad. His family thought it was weird, but they didn't understand. Like, we were best friends. Like, his cousin was there for me when he wasn't. Like, you know what I mean? Like... It was nothing in a sexual sense, period. Yes, like I said, me and his cousin got along great. Like, and then, again, we fought, and then I would leave and go to my grandma's when we would fight, and then I would always come back, so. It was honestly pointless to leave. Like, we would constantly fight. Like, not this fight, just like argue and stuff. And then, when his sister Abby got back, mind you, they got on drugs together, which really made me mad, but, you know, I overlooked it for so long because I was pregnant again with his second child, mind you, he hadn't helped with the first one, period, and then I get pregnant again, which I don't think I was prepared for, but I love my daughter to death, like, I wouldn't trade her for anything, and then my daughter came in May, of 2012. Okay, we'll she came May 26, 2012. Up. Always get back together. Like, I would always forgive everything he did. Like, always. Like, no matter what. And mind you, at this time, he's shooting up heroin constantly. Like, all the time. So, and mind you, he's around my kids doing this. Like, doing it in front of my kids. Like, everything. I kicked him out of my apartment. And mind you, normally when we would fight, I'd be the one to leave the apartment, not him. And the apartment was in my name, not his. So, I would constantly forgive him and come back. After a while, I just, I couldn't do it. So, I just, I kicked him out, and I would let him come see the kids. Still, bring them stuff, come see them, come hang out with them. And it didn't matter, because anytime he would come see them to hang, or hang out, like, he wouldn't even interact with them. Or he'd be like, this, like, leaned over them. Like, I'm sorry, but I don't appreciate that around my kids, so... After a while, like, I just, it was pointless to even let him be around. And then my mom moved in because some stuff happened with my grandparents. My uh, brother robbed them. And they kicked my mom out for it. And my sister. So they both came in and moved in with me in my apartment because it was just me and the kids living there at this time. And event my sister, her girlfriend, and my mom came and moved in. Kristen was probably two by then and so was almost a year old so at 20 years old i had my mom and my sister living with me which i was fine with because my mom worked nights so she was really never there and when she was she was sleeping and eventually they let my sister come back so that was fine like i didn't care that she left so okay needless to say my family called cps on me and tried to tell them that there was drugs in my house which was far from the case like so CPS came and she was like, honestly, we're going to close your case. She's like, I see no reason to be here. So that's how that ended. Like, there was never anything out of it. There was never a reason for it. September of 2000, I wouldn't say 14. No, 2013. Okay. Or was it 14? No, it was 2013. Um, I moved out of my apartment and moved in with Danny's grandparents. Because I didn't have anywhere to go at the time. I just couldn't afford my apartment anymore. So, I moved in with his grandparents. My mom moved home. Uh, and then, like I said, I moved to his grandparents from the end of September until Christmas of 2013. And then I moved home. So, and mind you, their dad, uh, Danny had went to rehab three times in the process of those since the kids were born. 
so 21 I think at this time oh uh, yeah I just turned 21 but 21 with two kids it wasn't easy and being by myself like because one he couldn't stay at my mom's like he wasn't allowed so it was me and my kids my mom my stepdad and that was it you go BB uh -huh. good job so like I said yeah it was just us and then yeah he would try to come visit every now and then like he would act like he cared and would try to come see them so like that was fine and then eventually I just said screw it like I just got tired of it I talked to a couple guys like none of that panned out and then May of 2014 I met Isaac I met him on a dating app meet me but I'd known him prior to this because him and my brother were friends when they were kids so I met Isaac so fell in which is my daughter Sophia fell in love with him like with his whole family like she just fell in love with them like loved them Tristan was if he was afraid like so he so Soph and I came and spent the night with Isaac and Tristan stayed with my mom and my sister which was fine. Soph's birthday came, which was May 26th. I met Isaac May 12th. And Soph's birthday came around May 26th. Her dad, their dad was still in rehab. He was just getting ready to be released. So the day he got released from rehab, I told him, if you want to see the kids, go to my mom's. Like, the kids will be at my mom's. You can go see them there. Which was fine. Like, it wasn't a big deal. So my mom let him come there to see the kids. I guess he ended up staying there a couple nights. I don't know. Like, I wasn't there. I stayed at Isaac's, so, him and his cousin were at my mom's, seeing the kids, okay, and this is where shit starts to get fucked up, then, I guess, after a couple nights, he told my mom, no one even thought to call me when I was their sole care provider, like, I did everything, after, like, a night or two, he told my mom he was gonna take the kids to his grandma so she could see them, which she could have came and seen them anytime she wanted, he took the kids to his grandma's for the night, no one thought to call me, no one did anything, until the next day when my mom called him, I guess, and asked him, you know, when are you gonna have the kids back? And he told her he wasn't bringing them back tonight, he'd bring them back tomorrow. So, of course, my mom started fighting with him, and told him no, he said he was only keeping them for the night. So, I get a phone call from him, from Danny, and he's like, hey, you know, your mom won't stop calling me, um... I took the kids to my grandma's for the night, and I'm gonna keep them again tonight. And I was like, you know what? Don't worry about my mom. I'll call my mom. I was like, just make sure you take the kids back to my mom's tomorrow. Like, not even thinking, and not thinking something fucked up was about to happen. So, I told him, you know, go ahead and keep the kids tonight. Because I didn't even know, like I said, he had the kids at his grandma's. Like, I had no idea. No one even thought to tell me. So, I was like, you know what? Go ahead and keep them tonight. I'll call my mom and tell my mom to just stop to like calm down like I talked to you so I called my mom and she explained everything to me and I was like you know someone could have called me and told me and she's like oh we tried to call you we and I was like no you didn't no one tried to call me I said I have no calls from anyone like not one person tried to call me so okay the next day comes around I try calling him like I try calling everyone no one would answer so of course that freaked me out and then finally I got a hold of him he was like yeah he's like do you care if I keep the kids one more night and I was like you know no I guess that's fine like trying to be nice because he hadn't seen the kids in over a month so me I'm trying to like be nice and be civil I was like yeah you know that's fine go ahead the next day came around and I heard nothing literally and I should have knew better like I, I knew I should have just went and got my kids but one I feel like someone should have asked me before he even took my kids out there in the first place if I cared and no one thought to ask put it this way by the third day he tells me he's like I'm not bringing the kids back and I was like what do you mean you're not bringing them back you know what I mean and come to find out they his grandma and mom somehow I talked him into going and filing for custody and in the state that I live in it doesn't matter whichever parent went and filed for custody gets to keep the kids until you go to court so that like broke me inside like my kids were my everything like if you know me you know my kids are like everything to me it happened everything you know happened there was nothing I could do about it at that time I couldn't afford a lawyer nothing so we went to court and this was I want to say August of 2014 
<clears throat> so mind you, like three months had went by since I had seen my kids. Because they would not let me come see them. So we go to court. And mind you, the state I live in, there's no grandparent rights. There's no such thing. Yeah, there's absolutely no grandparent rights in West Virginia. Unless I'm dead or he's dead. There's no grandparent rights. So we get to court. I go in. He goes in. They drug test him. He fails the drug test for heroin, morphine, and methadone. After that, for some reason, they had his grandma come in. And my mom wasn't allowed to come in. No one was allowed to come in with me. Like, every time I would try to talk, the judge would be like, I, I, like, she would not let me talk. Like, whatsoever. His grandma comes in and proceeds to tell the judge that I'm a bad mom because I let my kids watch TV and drink chocolate milk when they go to bed. They're happy. They're healthy. Like... Why does it matter if they drink chocolate milk when they go to bed or watch TV? The stupid judge let her take my kids home. They're, she was like, okay, well, we're just gonna leave them with them and you can see them. And So I was allowed to go see them only on the weekends. Yeah. My kids that I birthed, that I took care of for the last two and a half years, I'm only allowed to see, I'm allowed to go get on the weekends. We're allowed to pick them up on, or two days a week for eight hours. Or, my bad, two days a week for, I think it was like two hours, something like that. It wasn't long. It was like two or three hours, two days a week. And we did that. And at this time, they made it to where Isaac couldn't be around my kids. They told them that they did not want Isaac around my kids. And I'm like, why? I'll go along with it for the sake of my kids. Like, I'm not gonna push it like they're my kids. Like, I'm not. You know what I mean? So, I go along with that and the next court hearing, I missed. I thought it was at, uh, in the afternoon and it wasn't. It was in the morning. So, I screwed myself. Which really sucked. So, that one got rescheduled. He didn't show up to the next one. He supposedly has no rights to the kids at this point. Which is what I was told. I don't know. My kids still ended up with his grandma. I got supervised visits. And they won't let me come see my kids. And just so you guys all know, this is, it's been three years. Yeah. So, in January of 2015, me and Isaac found out we were pregnant with Malachi. So, we have Malachi. The last time I see my kids, I was five months pregnant with Malachi. So, that right there tells you how long it's been. And the last court hearing we went to, they literally just told me you can have supervised visits and since then I've not seen my kids they will not let me see my kids and I can't afford a lawyer it, to try to get my kids right now which really sucks because Isaac's the only one who works and we're trying to take care of Malachi and he has child support for his oldest son I'm literally screwed at this point and have no clue what to do like I've tried calling the law school where I live like or Every time I try to call the law school, they're out. Like, they're not in. So, like, I literally feel like the world's, like, against, like, just pushing against me at this point. And I have no idea what to do. They've never even met Malachi. And he's going to be three in September. So, like I said, me and Isaac found out we were pregnant with Malachi. And we had Malachi September 30th of 2015. It's been rough since we had Malachi because we normally don't fight. But we have fought a lot more since Malachi was born. But we're doing good now, which is amazing. But I'm not going to lie, for a while I didn't think we were going to make it. But we did. We're actually doing really good, which is awesome. Um, but I'm not going to lie and say it's not tough. It is tough. It's really tough to try to have a kid and be in a relationship. Do I think we should have waited sometimes? Yeah, I do. But we weren't trying to have Malachi at this point, so yeah, Malachi is going to be three and has never met his brother or his sister, and it really breaks my heart, but I don't know what to do at this point to even try to make things better. But last February, I left Isaac and got with Danny, I guess if you want to call it, for like a month. We were together and we were talking the one night. He literally told me he wanted to leave the kids with his grandma until they died. 
and mind you, his grandparents are in their 80s, and they're taking care of my two kids. I, since then, like, since my kids have been gone, I've been so depressed. Like, they're, when I was, before I got pregnant with Malachi, I literally laid in bed, like, I didn't do anything. Like, I'm not joking if it wasn't for Malachi. I would probably be so deep into depression at this point that I wouldn't even know who I am. Like, it, it, and it still gets bad at times. Like, I get really stressed out and, like, sick to my stomach. Like, I've not been right since my kids have been gone. Like, if that makes sense. Like, a piece of you is gone. Like, and I don't want to cry. Like, I really don't want to cry. Like, I'm trying really hard not to cry. But, like, I just feel like a piece of my soul and my heart has just been ripped from my chest. Like, I'm not myself. I'm... I put on a smile, I like, I act happy, I'm not happy it, by any means, like, I love Isaac to death, I love Malachi to death, but I am in no way, shape, or form happy with my life, and I have no help with Malachi other than Isaac, and he works, like, it's, it's hard, like, I'm not gonna lie, it's really hard. Yeah, guys, that's a little about my relationships and my kids. I was a teen parent of two kids, and... I do have every intention on marrying Isaac, like, I love him more than anything in this world, and he's literally the light in the dark for me, like, he's literally everything to me, him and Malachi, like, all three of my kids are, but those two are what has kept me sane and grounded. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to give you, like, a little backstory about me, my kids, like, it, it would be nice for you guys to get on, like, a little bit of a personal level with me, like, to actually know a little more about me. No, I don't have the perfect life. I do not at all, by any means. I wish I did, but I don't. But I think one day me and Isaac will have more kids. I don't know about any time soon. And I'm not gonna lie, a lot of my, like, it's just hard to hear this because my family's, like, I feel like my family thinks, like, I had Malik had to replace my other two kids, and that's nowhere true, like, in any way, shape, or form. Like, um, Danny's mom will bring the kids to my grandparents' house on the weekends. No one calls me to tell me my kids are there. Like, my family doesn't even think to let me know that my kids are going to be there so I can come see them. Like, that's the kind of family I have. Yeah, I only see my family at holidays. Like, it's, it's sad. Like, I, growing up, I would have never thought this is how my family would be. And I honestly feel like my family feels like that I have Malachi to replace my other two kids. I don't feel like they love Malachi. Like, just, it's it's crazy the way family can make you feel. Like, if it wasn't for Isaac's dad, brother, or him, like, I don't think we would have made it through any of this. Like, and his dad misses my daughter like crazy. Like, she loved him and his brother. Like, it's just sad to think that, that all this can happen because you get in a new relationship if you have kids from a previous relationship. But I just want you guys to know the relationship I had with Danny. I dealt with that for four years. I put up with him for four years being a heroin junkie. I put up with that for four years before I left him. And people don't get it. Like, you can only put up with that for so long till you're just, you're tired of it and you can't do it. So to anyone out there, if you're in that type of relationship, even if you do have kids with them, please leave. If they loved you, they will get better. They're, if they keep putting the drug before you and your children, they're not worth it. Like, I had to figure that out for myself. They're, like, I promise you, if you're in that relationship, you'll be so much better off if you leave. Even if that means you have to move back in with your parents to get on your feet again. Please leave. I was so tired of him putting drugs before me and our two kids. Like, I'm not going to be someone's second choice when we should be your first choice. Like, I'm, please, don't. I'm begging you, don't put up with that. If you're in that type of relationship, that toxic relationship, get out now. Take your kid and leave. Don't let them take your kid. Don't let them do anything. Don't let their family take your kid until you have a written agreement stating you have custody of your children. Like, I beg of you. Because that's where I messed up. And now I've been sitting here for three and a half years without my children. Yeah. My daughter doesn't even know who I am. Like, that's sad. That's, that's hard. But the last time my daughter seen a picture of me, she was like, who is that? She had no idea who I was. Don't stay in that type of relationship. Get out and make sure your kids are safe. Because I would do anything in this world to have my two kids here with me right now. Alright guys, so here's the finished look. That's how I'm out. Look at that highlight. Yes. Yeah, you hear my loud mouse? Yep, they're both in here. I'll show you. I think maybe you saw a little bit of a 
Wow, Alright guys, yep, this is the finished look. Hold on, and I'll show you guys a little bit closer. Alright love, so like I said, this is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed the first half of the video and what it contained to. Yeah, definitely smash the like button. Subscribe.